Today we will show you a signature Scandinavian interior design in an apartment located in Europe. It is very aesthetic, minimalist and therefore beautiful. Make yourself comfortable, it will be interesting. Friends, the apartment we were fortunate enough to design is located in Vilnius, in a trendy neighborhood that was recently completed, and we wouldn't be ourselves if we didn't start the review with the quarter itself, rather than the apartment. Well, firstly, because the block served as inspiration for the apartment's design, and many decisions transition from the exterior to the interior, and secondly, it's just cool yet affordable. I would even say that a very tricky scheme is applied here, there are very expensive houses made entirely of court and weathered steel. They have truly unique architecture. And next to them, there are quite simple buildings, but they also look very cool. Very fitting, yes, it blends in. Yes, because different houses are united by a very cool landscape. And if you look around us, you will see the same Thuja trees, a neat lawn and good paving tiles. The landscaping is great, but if you look at the houses themselves, they are in modern style, though all the materials used there, unlike the landscaping, are budget-friendly. Yes, look, if we cut out a small house separately, we will call such a house a milk carton, because if you take a white milk carton from the fridge, it is in the shape of a barn house. Here it is, a white milk carton. What did they make out of it? A couple of protruding balconies that add character to it. A stucco facade, look, the gutters are exposed, they are not hidden under the facade but brought outside. We never do it this way, but it is done like this here. This clearly does not add an elite feel to the neighborhood, but nevertheless, it is completely unnoticeable. To the naked eye, if you just ask someone whether these gutters bother them, no one has ever even noticed them, I'm sure. What I like most about this place is that it is a three-story building, plus a mansard floor. It is on a superhuman scale and it feels pleasant to be here. You don't feel overwhelmed by a 20-story building. And there are no cars here, there are enclosed courtyards, right? So all the concepts of a proper neighborhood are implemented here. We made a small introduction for you. Let's proceed to our apartment. Friends, this apartment is unique. Truly unique, without exaggeration. It is 689 square feet. Let me list what it has. It has a living room, a kitchen, a dining room with a huge table for six people and two sofas. Bedroom, children's room, laundry room, hallway area, bathroom, terrace. And it still looks spacious, right? I have a 753 square feet apartment, but it looks much smaller. When you're here, it feels like it's 860 feet, maybe 915, but definitely not 645, simply because of the number of rooms. What's the secret, really? The rooms are actually quite small, and this layout was possible because the house has a large number of windows. I would also like to note the layout solution and how it is conceptually played out. So, here we have this laundry area in the center, and look how well it is done. So, we have a completely solid wooden box that stands out with this finishing. On one side it is, so to speak, a wardrobe where you can take off your shoes. Somewhere this is the entrance actually to our laundry room and there is already the kitchen. And here is such a multifunctional box, which is used differently from all sides but looks like a monolithic volume. It's a very cool stylistic solution to unify all the apartments with one material. So. From this side, it's actually a hiding closet, and from this side, it's a door. You would never know this when you first enter the apartment. You see, it just looks like a beautifully finished box, and the other walls are covered with stucco. It's not the same plaster as in the stairwell. But also cool. But the stucco chagrin is also cool. It's not perfectly smooth, it still has some texture, a kind of graininess, and I like that. If it were perfect... An important point. Very often on Pinterest, we see these rough, unfinished walls. And then the builder comes and says, I know how to do this, let's make decorative plaster. And you see Venetian stucco instead of such a rough plastered surface. Do not use Venetian plaster. Moreover, the same plaster was even applied to the entrance door to avoid highlighting it as another object. 
I would like to show an absolutely small, seemingly insignificant detail, but one that is very important in a proper minimalist interior. The door frame is separated from the main plane of the wall by a thin gap, a fine line that matches the width of the shadow seam around the perimeter of the apartment, which separates the door frame from the wall with an internal slope. It is also indeed worth noting this group, so to speak, with doors and a mirror in the middle. A very cool solution in terms of volumetric and planning space, because look, if in the corridor the bathrooms had regular doors that were 6.5 feet high, here we have doors that reach the ceiling, and this area is highlighted with a wooden box with a mirror in the middle. Notice the doors that reach the ceiling and use the exact same material as here, so they are essentially being played up, yes, and again the door is hidden because of this. I would like to point out another interesting detail, so as not to lower the entire ceiling, because we see that the ceiling here is very high, and the ceiling height plays a very important role in the perception of the apartment. Here we clearly lowered the ceiling and it's somewhere around approximately 8 feet or maybe even a bit lower. In short, obviously it was lowered here by about 11.8 inches because there are air ducts, they go through the laundry room, they clearly go to the kitchen, and you can see that on one side the supply is lowered, and on the other side the exhaust is lowered. The overall ceiling remained approximately the same height as it was, it might have been lowered by a sheet of plasterboard, but overall it remained practically untouched, and that's really cool. Next, we enter our main space, which is divided into two clearly defined functional zones. On this side is the kitchen area, and in this part is the living room space. And here, the same principle applies. If we look at the corner with the televisions, we see the same kind of accentuation with panels on which the television is mounted, along with an acoustic system. And this idea continues with these very, very interesting sliding panels. Let's call these blinds in the form of wooden panels. We have made completely different shutters before. Probably this is the first time we are doing something like this. It is done very easily because there is a ceiling drop here and over there is a regular rail for a sliding wardrobe and just hanging doors. That is, they move along the upper rail. Just like in sliding wardrobes, it's a very simple system, very beautiful and it turned out to be impressive, it turned out to be conceptual. Again, it plays with the idea of this cube, plays with the idea of doors to the ceiling. The apartment looks very cohesive. It must be said that there were no thin fabrics here. There is a sofa made of something like suede, there is a very ordinary carpet, and that's it. These are the two, so to speak, fabrics used throughout the apartment. The rest is quite aesthetic. Yes and if we had hung curtains here, it would have made this interior ordinary and it would have started to pull it towards a certain coziness, so to speak. And here, the main word is not coziness, but rather an ascetic minimalism. I find the percentage of coziness here is just perfect. I feel very comfortable here because the proportions are balanced and correct. I think it's largely because of the color of the wood. The color of the wood, and I really like the purple color of the furniture, it really adds some character to this interior. These are branded chairs and a table made according to our sketch. And here is an interesting kitchen. I wanted to talk a little about the kitchen's ergonomics, because on this side the refrigerator is hidden. That is, it is a built-in refrigerator and is part of this wooden cube we already talked about. Then we had two conditional protrusions in the interior and we symmetrically integrated the kitchen relative to these two protrusions. Moreover, in the right proportion, the sink is located first, but in front of the sink, there is a space to unload groceries from the refrigerator. In other words, they are washed next, and then they are prepared. Listen, the countertop here is more than two feet. Two feet is too little because you want to place a kettle like this, and next to the kettle you want to place a pot, a pan, and the depth of the countertop, it's important. Here it's about 2.4. And this is a very cool size. If you have the opportunity, and the apartment allows for more than two feet, definitely go for it. It is written in Neufert's book as an ergonomic standard, but in practice, in modern practice, it is much more convenient now. It is also worth noting the kitchen finishing here. It is all large format porcelain stoneware, which is very neatly cut. And as you can see, almost the entire kitchen is made from it. That is, it transitions to the facades. The same story is repeated on the countertop. 
Moreover, look at how neatly the edge is cut. There are a lot of mitre cuts, a very complex detail. In Europe, they rarely make these 45 degree cuts. For example, look, there is no mitre cut here. That is, here the porcelain stoneware is simply glued onto the base of this cabinet. And overall, it looks quite nice. Although it is not painted in the color of this porcelain stoneware, it more or less matches the shade. And overall, I don't see any dissonance here. In my opinion, it even looks nice that the end is two-toned. It turns out to be quite interesting. And right here, where the countertop is, it is very neatly cut. And the same goes for this shelf. Well, the shelf is also an excellent solution, that is, it can be adopted and used in projects because it is thin, it is beautiful, it is a cantilever shelf, very long, and overall it is, of course, functional. Very often when we forego upper cabinets, there is a drawback that there is nowhere to store anything. Here is a shelf that will help you make up for, let's say, the mist volumes. And everything you place here in your interior, there's some kind of decor here, and it kind of fills this minimalism and adds some individuality. The same will be true from our client. Over there is another spotlight that compensates for the shadow cast by the shelf. This results in very proper lighting, meaning the countertop is evenly illuminated. One wouldn't provide enough light and this one wouldn't be enough either, but together they fully compensate. Cooktop. The cooktop is probably the only option, at least according to the reviews of all our clients, in which the hood is truly functional. Nothing works at all. The one which comes out from under the table and it pulls poorly. Only the front burners are pulled. As soon as you place the pot on the back burner, it's just steam. It goes up and you just look at it. It costs a fortune. The exhaust fan is running at full capacity and the steam just rises up. There are different models and various versions of such hoods. We haven't tested all of them yet, so to speak. But here, where we have this huge duct, it is indeed impressive in size and it allows for all the steam to be sucked in. And this is not a cassette filter, meaning everything that gets sucked into this hood goes into the ventilation system. That is, you don't need to change filters here, and it truly works. It has stood the test of time. It's also Elika, but not the same as mine. Another detail I wanted to mention is the ventilation. Look, we have two such slot diffusers. They are supported by a very cool, thin strip of shadow seam, if I can put it that way. And this same solution is duplicated on that side, covering our fasteners for these sliding panels and curtains. It's really neat, these elements of repetition, they unify and compose our design into one large cohesive whole. We could go into a bit more detail about this particular composition with the television. I just want to say that on one side there was an empty wall, quite flat, and probably the simplest thing one could come up with is to make an ordinary console table, put a TV on it, place some speakers on it, and that's the whole story. And here we went further, we highlighted this area we extended it with these functional cabinets which open up and here you can store a lot of cool stuff and below naturally we have space to hide all the wires, all the acoustics and run them under the panels directly to the TV. No need to chase the walls, even if you finish the walls and there's just three outlets and you want to avoid having cable channels, you can extend the furniture structures and implement this solution. These are wooden casings around the window portals. A very beautiful minimalist solution. It is much nicer than this plaster slope, which is usually made of gypsum and can break over time. Pretty unreliable. This is minimalist, neat and sort of compositionally correct. Well, I would mention the terrace because the terrace here is an integral part of the apartment and in general the feature of this house is these terraces protruding from the facade. It's great when you have a terrace, but there's an issue with the view from the window. At the moment, the view is directly onto the wall of the neighboring building, which itself is not very attractive, but I will tell you this, that building is slated for demolition. So, this building exists now, but in a year it will be gone, revealing a beautiful panorama, and this apartment will be three times more expensive. This is a small room for the smallest member of the family, but nevertheless, there are quite a few interesting solutions here. The first interesting solution is the bed. After a child outgrows the size of a standard toddler bed, many parents are unsure about what type of bed to choose next. And probably this solution is universal because it is suitable for a child of school age and at the same time it looks minimalist. 
It can be used as a sofa, so I don't even know what to call it. It's a sofa bed. We often use it in our projects. It is incredibly comfortable with soft sides and a fairly large mattress. This is how it looks. A reading lamp is a must, as well as shelves where you can place your phone to charge. And even the youngest family members have gadgets nowadays. A workspace, a wardrobe. As you can see, this room is 75 square feet. It is very small, but it has everything you need. There are even two cabinets, a table and pull-out drawers. Everything is veneered and very beautifully made. This is a chair that probably visually unites the sleeping area with the workspace. Here we have curtains to make this children's room cozier. In my opinion, this is the optimal solution for small spaces. The next room is the bedroom, which is designed like a hotel room. As you can see, there is a large bed here, approximately six feet, a king-size bed, despite the small volume of the room itself. There is a compact table that can be used to place a laptop on. Interesting pull-out drawers and the repetition of the finishing that we have already seen in the hallway. Similarly, curtains add a touch of coziness, which is essential in bedrooms and our already standard favorite solution, that is a soft headboard so that it is comfortable to sit. And here are these shelves with such drawers where outlets are hidden, allowing you to store all the cables and charging devices. You can then neatly close them like this and take out the cable you need from here. Regarding the lighting itself, there is also a very interesting solution here because there is no central chandelier. There is a LED strip that provides just decorative evening light when you need minimal lighting in the room. Overall, everything is quite simple and neat. Here, it is also worth paying attention to the walk-in closet, which is made from the same materials as the walls. We have MDF, it is plastered in the same way as the walls. All of this blends seamlessly with our final finishing and looks very neat. And the last room I would like to talk about, well of course besides it there is also a laundry room but it is quite ordinary with a washing machine, a dryer, a place to put an ironing board and a storage room with shelves for storage. I would like to tell you about the bathroom. The room is divided into two zones by this wall. Look at how interestingly the shower area is organized. Notice it is entirely in micro cement. That is micro cement on the floor, micro cement on the walls. Micro cement is not afraid of moisture. When it is coated with varnish, it can be fully used in the shower and it is not enclosed with any glass. Well, it's clear what can be installed here if you have such a need, but overall glass is not necessary here because the depth of this wall is quite large and there won't be any splashes. People often make mistakes, they take a small glass and when they use the shower, everything here gets wet. In this case, using the shower is absolutely comfortable. Also note that the faucets for the shower itself are located here, meaning they are not situated deep inside. When you turn on the water from deep inside, the water pours directly on you and often it is either very cold or very hot. It rarely reaches the desired temperature immediately. When the taps are located right here, the water doesn't flow onto you. You can touch it there first, adjust it to the temperature you need, and only then step under the shower. Here, a shelf for gels has been made, also an absolutely simple solution, also in micro cement, very functional, and a handheld shower. As for the sink area itself, it is a very charismatic and very beautiful zone, probably the most beautiful one we have done, at least in my ranking. Here is the water switch. Do you see how it's done? There is a pipe and a mixer and here accordingly there is a long spout that comes from the ceiling. Very beautiful. If you think it somehow gets in your way and you can't see yourself, there's no such problem. The mirror is very large, you can easily stand from this part. This is again porcelain stoneware, a custom sink. Here we have a storage system and a towel warmer. It is not water-based, it is electric. Water-based towel warmers leak. Electric ones are much better. An absolutely minimalist black device where you can hang and dry your towel. So, friends, did you like the apartment? Be sure to write about it in the comments. Tell us what you think of this Scandinavian design. Is it too aesthetic? Do you like minimalism in interiors in general? It will be very interesting to read. 
You can rate our decision with likes and subscriptions. We are really looking forward to it. See you next time. Bye-bye.